both the joy and the privilege of introducing Katukura Bernard to all of you and those of you who are watching, who comes to us from Uganda in Africa. And Kat is a student of the Urantia book and has been one since 1997. He is passionate about the Urantia book's teachings and its guidance, and I can attest to his passion. It just oozes out of his body. It is beautiful. He facilitates courses in English at the Urantia book Internet School, UBIS, as a way of providing service to the promotion of the Urantia book to his fellows. Kat acts as a mentor in business startups and business development that are inclined towards young innovators and entrepreneurs. And he trains in project monitoring and evaluation. He is an outgrower with Kenyara Sugar Works, to whom he supplies sugarcane periodically. Currently, Kat is a business manager at Core Identity Uganda Limited. He has done several business cons consultancies in startups and development. He holds a Master's of Science degree in Accounting and Finance at Makara University, a postgraduate certificate in Monitoring and Evaluation at Makara University, a bachelor's degree in business administration accounting at Kampala, and several certificates such as counseling and web 2.0 tools. And he has so many letters after his name that you need an extra line. In his free time, he enjoys reading, playing chess, and touring the world. And we are so Great. happy to have you here and welcome you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Oh, uh, is it morning? Morning to you? So, we go to Uganda right now, all of us, right? Something small about Uganda. It's a small country of about 41.5 million Ugandans, uh, as per this. 2014 census. It's a country that uh, was not so long ago visited by different religious sects or groups. It's a country that has experienced evolution of um, religion from tradition up to the current phenomenon of different religions from different um, countries, different regions of the world, and is still going through the phase of, of change in terms of uh, tradition, beliefs, and any other that relates to that. This is Uganda. That's the structure of Uganda. That's how it looks like. In the north, it is bordered by South Sudan. In the west, by Congo. That is the Democratic Republic of Congo. In the south, which is this one, uh, by Tanzania. In the east, by Kenya. And that is, when you do those countries, you locate Uganda, exactly. It's a country crossed by the equator. It's not here, but equator crosses around here. So you can still locate Uganda using the equator. Just walk around. You'll get to the, <laughs> the country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a country rich in culture. Um, and so many ethnicities. As you can see, the map says, map of Uganda showing the ethnicity. All the Ugandans in Uganda are foreigners in quotes, if I may say. We are visitors to this country. I am a visitor as well. I trace my roots to sometimes Ethiopia, sometimes to Cameroon, 
Ethiopia is somewhere here, just after Kenya. So uh, my home area, where I come from, is here. Yeah. They said I supply sugar cane to, I'm a farmer. I stay here. This is where my farm is, right? Currently, I stay and work here in Kampala. So I'm vast across the country. Yes, I, I, I move around the country a lot. So in Uganda, we have the different types of ethnicity. We have the Bantu as the dominant, as you can see, the green area, that's predominantly Bantu, of course, with few of the interrelated, uh, the, the, the other ethnicities, but predominantly Bantu. In the north, we have the Sudanics here, this, and then Nilotics, this. My fiancé comes from here, around here. It's called Lango. The Luo, right? is somewhere here. Uh, then the Kaliak, somewhere here, in Teso, sub-region, this. Yeah. So that's the ethnicity that has a lot of other tribes within them. Uh, the dominant tribes in Uganda are the Baganda, which are located here. The introduction of different religions to Uganda was started from here by different, uh, different foreigners who came in, in search of trade, for example. In, in, in 1830s, the Arabs introduced Islam. So they come away through either Kenya or Tanzania and came to Buganda region. They found Buganda to be one of the well-organized kingdom in the whole of this country. So they introduced their cultures, their religion to the king of that time, at that time. And later it spread. So we have this as our hub where we have religion coming and going out towards the whole of the country, right? Um, in 1977, after the introduction, of, in 1877, the Anglican missionaries from Britain, they also used the same route and come, introducing the Christianity concept. Yeah. And start spreading. And 19, in 1879, the French Catholics come as well, introducing uh, the Catholic religion in the country as well. Now, you see that with the introduction of different religions coming in, there's of course rivalry within, but still centered here, because predominantly this was mostly Bush and during that time. Uganda is not so old in civilization, about uh, 1,700 years ago to 2,500, that's when civilization starts to come around. It's not well documented. It has no documentation. We do not have clear documentation up to the 1800s, about religion, about culture. Most of it was, um, was uh, how do I say, uh, by word of mouth, oral, yeah? That's a way of spreading our, uh, it was mostly done that way in order to protect against um, intruders, against people coming and taking culture. Because then it, it was only a few people who knew about the real core culture. And those were the clan leaders. The setup was clan leaders. Here we had a kingdom of Buganda. We had Toro and Ankole. We have Bunyoro here. And where we didn't have kingdoms, we had chieftains, yes, and clans. So the clans were 
headed by elders. Yeah, we have elders and the chieftains headed communities and societies. So apparently up to today, those kingdoms and chieftains and clans retain the, the, uh, their location. Yeah? Uh, for example, the Buganda Kingdom, which covers nearly the whole of this, still retains the, the map. So the central government, headed by our president, is a republic. Uh, president Museven has to consult with the kings and the chieftains of given areas in order to get, uh, to get his programs going. Yes. Uh, throughout history, there has been upheavals. As we headed towards independence, we had a lot of turmoil uh, between kingdoms, between individuals, and the fights and all that until, 1980, in, until 1962. When we get independence, and the Kavaka by then becomes our first president of this kingdom, Buganda kingdom, yeah? However, he was short-lived. He was replaced by Milton Obote, who came from Lango region, right? So he also comes to be president and abolishes any traditional leadership. Yeah, so he abolishes kingdoms, anything like that. Until 1993, when Museven takes over in 1986 and reinstates the kingdoms. So currently we have the kingdoms back. As you'll see, for example, we have, if I may, oh, ah. Uh. to share mm. could you come in? yes <laughs> I want to show this slide I want to go back you want to go yeah like uh, I need to share something here I want to share this uh, when I click on it? Yeah. So I need this. Oh, okay. You have to share. Um, no, why don't you go back? Uh, it's not working. Okay. Do you have to share this? Just skip it. No, just, okay. just go back, remove the share, remove this. That's good. You got it, you got okay. it. It's fine. Yeah. That's okay. Oh, it's not yeah, showing what it's not gonna show. It's not showing what I need, okay. Okay. Uh, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. slide okay I have linked my my slides and it's not giving me my links it's not giving me my links okay at the top at the top Slideshow. Go slideshow. Slideshow at, at the top it? there. Okay. Yeah. Click slideshow from the current slide. From current slide? From current slide. From current slide. This Click one. on it. Okay. And then you can switch with the arrow. 
That's the next one. No, no, no. That's I, the previous one. No, I've linked my slides. I need, I need to show this. Yeah, but you can go back to here. You see, you go back to this one, you move forward. I've linked this. So oh, I you want to well, that won't work. It, okay, then I, I know you how start to. start doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I need. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, yes. I'll the link, is the link to a slide in the presentation? Yeah, yes, yeah. It's a link to, uh, because it doesn't look like that. It looks like it's a link to a JPEG. It's, uh, it'll, yeah, it's... Um, Okay, uh, let me just a moment. Um, it's not showing. But okay. Anyway, uh, my pictures are not showing. It's fine. Can you scroll down on the left side so you, you see all your slides? And then you can just choose the slide you want to show. It has taken on to that. It doesn't... I'm on a desktop. Uh, it's not showing desktop. <laughs> yeah. I have minimized. His screen is no longer linked to this. Got it. Oh. That's the problem. He has two screens. One that shows what he's seeing and one that shows what you're seeing. So he wants us to see what he's seeing. Yeah. I'm, I'm on my desktop. Yeah, yeah. I need to see. I, I'm not seeing it here. Okay. So we shall not see pictures. We, I, I just continue that. I'll continue normally. I'll just continue normally. I'll, I'll continue normally. There, was, there are some pictures I had linked. I thought I was going to use the the beamer. Okay, so we have all these show like the different pictures of the different the Bunyoro Kingdom, which is around here, and what the attire they put on and what they do. It was one of the largest kingdoms in Uganda. This kingdom, it stretched all the way to Tanzania all the way to near Malawi, if anyone knows Malawi, yeah. So with the coming of the, the British, they, of course, had to fight it back. So it is during, at some point, they had taken over the Bunyoro, I mean, Buganda Kingdom. And they, uh, they had to merge in order to fight off the, the British at some point. So. Uh, this kingdom and this Bunyoro king, Buganda kingdom and Bunyoro kingdom, they were warrior tribes, warrior kings, who highly resisted the influence of uh, the white person, as they say, or the influence of any other culture into their kingdom. But with time, they started to sublime and accepted uh, the the different cultures that came with and the different religions. That's why we have now the Catholics, the Protestants, because it all emanates from here. Yeah. Uh, the hostility of this, like the Buganda Kingdom, was so much that there was a missionary called Hannington, if you've heard about him, who came from the East. Now, the culture here had a belief that anyone who comes from the East and enters the kingdom superstitiously was going to overthrow the king, the king of that time. So they had to lynch him. They killed him at, uh, this is where the Nile starts, the source of the Nile. If you've heard of the Nile here. And this is the river Nile, all the way to Sud South Sudan until the Mediterranean, yeah. So he was lynched just before the, before he entered the kingdom. And that's how hostile the way by that time, yeah? Uh, the kingdoms here, the Ankoli and the Batoro are not that hostile, but they are so, uh, 
uh, so private. They don't like sharing or giving out their what their culture gives. These, the Acholis, the Karamajongs, they are like hunters. Uh, I think I'll share with you the, the different pictures. They are hunters. Up to today, some of them are gatherers. This side of the country is arid, so arid and hostile to live in compared to this side. If you notice the Bantu settle in the Interlacastin, this is the Interlacastin region that has more fertile land, uh, more rainfall. They enjoy a lot of good climate. We have Mount Renzori around here that has snow on the peak, just to show the difference. While here we have Mount Moroto, somewhere here, that is so arid because of the Ethiopian highlands that blocks the, the this becomes the leeward area where it, it blocks this, the rains from coming to this area. Turkana is just next here, so it's also arid, that's Kenya. So it, it experiences arid climate compared to this side, which is a bit uh, green and nice looking. The, 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 um, somebody asked me where did the kidnap of the tourists took place here, and they were crossed to King Congo, right? So here we have Queen Elizabeth, one of the largest national parks with very beautiful scenery and beautiful animals. All the big cats are there. We have another national park here. And each of these regions, people experience life differently, right? These are more aggressive people, yeah? If they hate you, they will just tell you, or they will just shoot you. This area, very dangerous. They are cattle rustlers. They keep cattle and very intimate with their cattle. They rather not sell any, but go hungry, sorry, but go hungry, yeah? Uh, this, the, this is the cattle corridor as well. They keep cattle, but long-horned cattle. I wish I had my pictures here. You'd see some of them. So long-horned cattle. This side, if you've heard of Amin, he came from here. This is his area, yeah? So he, he was one of the, our dictators as president. Oh, sorry. He was one of our dictators. He came from here. This is called West Nile. It has the Madi, the Lugbaras, who come from East Congo. Yeah, most of them come from East Congo and associate with Ugandans from there. So because of the diversity of our country and the ethnicity, we have different approaches to getting to to disseminate the book as well because of the different cultures involved. Now, religious development in Uganda. This uh, table shows the, the different census. We have the 1991 census, the 2002 census, and the current one which took place in 2014. We see that the Christian, Christianity in 1991 was at 85.4, and it reduced by 2, 0 0.2, and increased again. So there's fluctuation in Christianity. And the Roman Catholic Church, we see it descending. It's reducing its population. As of uh, 2014, we have 39 compared to 1991 with 44.5. And that has gone on for a long time. And we hope that the shift is due to the, you would say, revealed religion or the different experiences people are having about the truth they had before and now the truth they are having now. Because most of them are questioning a lot of things since most of them entered with a materialistic mind, yeah? Most of them were either forced into it. For example, we have the Uganda Matters 
Have you heard about them? Some of us made. Uganda martyrs were killed by King Mwanga in about 18, 18, 1886. They were killed for being believers in Christianity. There were about 27 of them. And uh, there's a shrine yeah, uh, that commemorates the Uganda martyrs. That's to show you how brut brutal the kings were by then. That when you go against them, they just kill you. But of recent, there has been some change. And of course, these are the different <coughs> religions that are there. We have the Pentecostals, the Seventh Day, the Baptists, Eastern Orthodox Christian, the other Christians, the Muslims, the traditions. The traditions are many. Most of our Ugandan people are dual religionists, if I may say. They are Christian, at the same time traditionist. So they go for Christianity when it fails, they come back to their original <laughs> belief system and try it as well. So they carry two, yeah, uh, yeah, two, two sides of the coin. And that's their experience most of the time. You, uh, of recent, of course, especially the Pentecostals, a bit to one religion, yes. But the Catholics, they, they are dual. Then we have the youth who, who just, because this is all Christianity, apart from Muslim, they can go anywhere they want. Anything that pleases them. If there's music and they like it, they go there. If, if there's a good pastor or priest who, who impresses them, they go. As long as they are within the Christian, are those move from Catholics, uh, Church of Uganda, Anglican, to Pentecostals. Those can move anywhere within the, the limit. And of course, in Uganda, the legal system, the constitution is clear. It allows freedom of worship. That's why we have the different religions and the tradition. Freedom of worship. So they protect. But of 1998, 99, we had um, a cult that killed some, some good number of people. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. Uh, that cult was around here. It was headed by a man called Chibwetere Joseph, who was once a Catholic and uh, created his own religion. And at some point, with that belief that the world is ending in 2000, he massacred the, about about a hundred and so people who lived around there in his church. So he burnt it up. He got in, uh, let people in, and locked the doors and burnt them up. And because of that, the government became a bit strict and um, and in, introduced some ground rules. And the ground rules. Uh, we want to say, okay, if you are a church or you want to open a church, you have to register with the government mm -hmm. or you have to be affiliated to the ori original churches that we have, either the Roman Catholic or the Anglican or the Pentecostal, those that are recognized, or you register as an NGO, at least you must register, something like that. That's under our law, no more. So any of that you can go. As you can see, uh, Catholic Church is not uh, flexible enough because of their strong dogma in terms of uh, the minds. Tell people, don't change. This is how it is. So it's not that flexible to allow people to easily move about. But as I told you, the youth, which they're about 72% of the population, can go about anywhere, anywhere. However, when they reach adulthood, because they have to get married and get rings, and you know, so they have to choose which church to go to of the ones they have been moving around. So they, they tend to choose from the three. And wherever they land, then they stick there. They don't have to change anyhow. Miracle such and materialistic tendencies, most of the that which prompts people to 
join this is the preaching, especially in the Pentecostals of Uganda. They teach that when you join us, you're going to get everything. You're going to be wealthy, you're going to get the car, you're going to get the, the house. And such have driven people towards them. Of course, as they reach there, they tend not to find what they had gone for. So we see the change in the demography, as you've seen there. You find there's decrease. They go from place to place, just because they're searching for that. And then, of course, the, disaster, the deserters. Now, there are those who change, leave maybe Pentecostal and join Catholic, and they're labeled deserters, right? So somehow another format of keeping people in in check, so you fear to be called a deserter because you don't want society to view that way. And they stick there, just keep there, yeah? Individual consult with their gods. I had some pictures, unfortunately, it couldn't show. We have so many gods in Uganda, so many gods. We have gods like river gods, we have the sun gods, we have trees, Anything that you think can, and the government allows that, it's okay. However, if it goes beyond, when you come sacrifice, for example, we have most Ugandans, some of them, more especially searching for riches, they go sacrificing kids, children, um, sacrificing even humans, you know. So there it's too much, so government may come in to do some checks. However, the consultancy there is too much into the gods. So we have um, a house of someone and he has a shrine, a small shrine just next to him as his gods. However, he has the Catholic Church or the Pentecostal Church. So he goes there. When it fails, he comes home. And then he can, we have elders. As I told you, the setup is in that we have leaders for clans, for example, or chieftains, or the kings, who people consult for whatever. Some are rainmakers, elders, you know, because they have known the art of studying the environment. You know, they have been, of course, scientifically, it is, they have been for long in the given place, so they know when the clouds are there, oh, it's about to rain there. But the youngster doesn't know, so they will consult them, and they're like, oh, this man is magical. Anything that they don't explain, as I said, they attribute it to the gods or um, the unseen. Then, of course, consulting the dead. Most of the shrines, they do that a lot. They want to know what the dead are saying. But all that is a bit falsy. It's, it's not true. Because most of them are done in ignorance of the other people. It's, it's always like drama, because we try to find out, is it true, can it work? But there's always just drama behind it, a lot of, the, a lot of times. Culture impact the, ac uh, impact the acceptance of the Eurasia book. Yes, uh, because of the different tribes in Uganda, it really, many tribes hence traditional beliefs. So there are so many tribes, we have about 65 that we know of. Uh, that map you saw, uh, if I may go back a bit, if I may go back. Around here, this is Kam Karamoja region. We have a, a tribe that's going extinct. It has about 12 people left. Why? Because of their belief system. They don't want to marry from out, they don't want to go out, they want to keep within the community. So. Yeah, they, they go dying and dying. And then, of course, intermarriage. There's a lot of uh, direct marriage, you know? Sister marries brother, something like that. It happens a lot in the western side of the country. So, of course, you know, the Russia book says that the strata becomes weak with time. It becomes a danger to future progenies. So, yes. That also is influenced by many tribes, so we shall have a backlash, or somehow the belief system may, we may find it hard to establish. 
education has brought some transition in Uganda. We have free education, uh, primary, secondary, all free. But of course at a cost, because free means everyone and means negligence from the government and the people offering the education, especially the teachers, because they're underpaid and all that. So people prefer to go through private school where they're paying some money. But generally, there is education. We have over, over 25 universities in the country, across the country, with many branches. Yeah, we have, we have about two universities that teach philosophy from degree level to actually a master's level, philosophy, and a lot of other humanities, yeah, most of the time. So the education system is there, it's good, but the reading culture of our people, very poor, very poor. Actually, they drop the book concept, the book reading, immediately after graduation. So most times they, they are not interested in reading, not so interested in reading. However, the education is there. Uh, there's a shift from community worship. Yes, um, you know, previously Ugandans had, we, we used to live in community, right? Where I am the father, my son, my great son, we, all live in a, I, I had a picture where there is what we call the manyatas. There's the father's house and his concubines, then uh, the sons also build around him and that kind of community. And because of such community, we have a belief system com uh, introduced where you don't go outside the norm. It is th that setup that like in the lion setup, where the the lion, the lioness skips within, and the man can be fought off and goes, yeah. In this system, the women control the society, where they are the they are, they are the ones who keep the information about the clan. As I talk, I don't know any much about my clan, but my lady knows because it is passed to them because they keep within. And that's why once they are married, they don't leave. Because then we have entrusted them with some secrets of the clan. So we wouldn't allow them to leave. And that explains why divorce and other they don't, they are not allowed. <laughs> okay, not, not that they are not allowed, but it's that way, that we have secrets, we are, remember we don't write anywhere. So we have, our system is oral, passed on from mothers to mothers like that. So it's within. So instead of living, we create for them a house and get another wife, right? <laughs> so they stay within, yeah, because they have our secrets. Because the next thing would be, we kill them. Y yeah. <laughs> you don't go with our secrets. Yeah. So yes, uh, that has changed over time. Because now we are seeing openness. People have opened up. I mean, we are now living, as I showed you the map. I'm all over the, <laughs> the place. Um, I have a farm the other side. I'm living the other side, my home. So yes, it has changed. It's changing, and uh, I hope with time it will change. Current and current past and future culture. Currently, of course, tradition and egoism is too much among our people. Too much of it. Egoistic tendencies. Egocentric. Yeah? Selfishness. It's too much. I I assure you, you introduce the Iran book, they will be happy to adopt the first time. Very excited all. Oh. But all that excitement is what do I gain from it? Not the spiritual gain and value gain and, you know, that kind of elevation of self. It is about uh, how, how can I, you know, use it either to lie to people, like they use the Bible most of the time to lie to people and get monies from them. Uh, so, yeah, that kind of thing. 
So that's them. Yeah, what's in it for me? Something like that. Uh, as I told you, closed communities, uh, freedom of speech is there. This is to the extent that you don't tamper with the, with the political setup of the system, this freedom of speech. Yeah. So we have, yes, democracy, but no, oh, oh. It, it is there. But we are getting there, this freedom of speech. It, it's alluded in the Russia book that democracy is not the ultimate government, right? There could be more. more advanced, well, yeah, good governments. Then recognition criteria in which government identifies a region. Uh, yes. This recognition criteria, I told you the legal system. Government allows you. So, of course, if they don't allow you, you don't function there, and you'll be affected. So, yeah. Uplifting culture in Uganda. Education, very important. In order to remove that egoistic tendencies and uh, selfishness. I think we need education that preaches self-awareness and spiritual education that shifts people from this idealis idealistic tendencies to something much more higher than what they have right now. They have something, but they just, they are waved all over the place. Like I told you, the youth change anyhow. They don't mind. We've it's not about the concept of, you know, it's something, what, oh, that excites me. Let me go there. That's, that's them. So we need to, the education that will tell them, no, wait. You have to be, you have to value everything, where you're going, what you're doing, something like that. Inspired philosophies, yes. Because, you know, they go to tradition, they resort to tradition because they want something that works. You know, the magic, they look at magic, they look at love potions and all that. Uh, and that is, we need to tell them, no, it, it doesn't work. Uh, science to prove that this is just a myth, that rains can come. I can tell that it's going to rain. You don't have to go to the witch doctor. It's cloudy and Nimbus clouds is coming. So it's, yeah, we need to, yeah, something like that. Periodically meeting, peri periodically meeting and explaining to the population. It's a, in Uganda, it's all about attending to these people all the time. They keep forgetting. They call them drawbacks. They grow back. You bring them up. So you have to put up mechanisms that can attract, that can always keep them aware. Yeah? She had benefits inspired by the Yonsha book. Yes. This one I can attest. When you, f from my works, I have seen a lot of this happening. Already we have some Urantia book readers there, a few of them, but at least there's something going on, yeah. Involving Uganda is their own development. It's very important. And this, like I said, leaders who are inspired. Now, we don't have to impose uh, anything onto them, but we have to work with what they have in order to develop what they have with them. Of course, introduce the idea with them. So yes, uh, the group is called Cosmic Citizens in Uganda Study Group. It's, uh, it has about active members, about six of them, but we are about 12. 10 are there, like the known 10. The other ones are yet, uh, because I have, I have two books. They write a book, I have two books, so it goes around you know, just move around with it. So we under-resourced, of course, I may say. But yeah, it's there. However, as my approach is, I don't have to tell them we need, no, we need this, we need that, no. I'm giving them time to read and also get the app, the book from the app. They read through it, but they like the physical, yeah? They, they are not good at computer. They are not good, given that the internet is also a problem. Internet, a challenge as well. Then uh, challenges in establishing the book, it's important that we inform the authorities. Very important. It's not a problem, by the way. It's easy to do that. It's not a problem, but it's important that in order to inform government, we need to be well equipped with the material to share with them. Religion, religions and uh, traditional beliefs and belief systems. Yes, this, 
These religions are very brutal. They fight brutal in Uganda. Very brutal. The moment they see you taking their flock or people coming out of their church, they hunt you down, in quotes, hunt you down. <laughs> so they want to know where are they going? Who is that? What is that? You know? And then people have this bias that, what is that coming? They want to, but what is it about? And that's what authorities, governments will ask you. What is it about? Is it a religion? Is it? So they, the question, the suspicion is too much. Yes? So the backlash, there will be a lot. The traditional beliefs, people not, they still attach themselves too much to tradition. Ghana's fear to venture and adopt new knowledge for fear of society perception. That is very important. They always have it. Anybody who goes against the norm, the usual, they say, where are you going? This is the, come back here. If it's a family, they, they will even disown you if you, if you, if you're in society or you're in a kingdom, they throw you out. Those days, in the, like, the Baganda culture, they would take you in the forest and leave you there with the animals until you die or something like that. So they are very brutal there, yeah. Then the poor reading culture, it's too much, too much. So with the volume of the book, wow, and the language as well, it, it may prove very hard. The youth are not well nurtured into adopting new ideas. As I've, so, I've said, they move from place to place. The only thing is if you can design something that holds them in one place, it will be nice. And then language, of course, English is quite a challenge, more especially with the English in the book. It's great. High is philosophical and it's really too much. And then the problem of internet, we have electricity, fortunately, most of it, but the internet is a problem. It's accessibility is sometimes uh, beyond the centers, you don't get internet. <coughs> Even if you wanted to buy, you have money to buy in bundles, as you said, or set up, the reception is not good. Yeah. So uh, establishing the Russia book, we have, we have to have good documentation from the foundation and objectives, purpose, well clarified in order to, this is to the government. I, I have been near the government, if I may say, <laughs> so I know how it works. <laughs> so this is important. Holding public seminars, conferences, workshops, for Ugandans, this is something that works for them. Always keeping them engaged and keeping them aware and always reminding them that this is happening, this is what you need to do. And that will just keep it, keep it in their minds. Talk shows and television, radios, and yeah, we have so many televisions, we have so many radios, and social media. We have over 2,200 radio stations in all the districts across the whole country. So you can easily access them. It's very easy. Make available copies of the Irash book and related reading material. As I told you, my group, we have only two books, but we are managing. So we need more of that. Visiting schools and institutions across the country. Yeah, this is important. My dad got a book from the university, not a book. It was uh, a pullout, uh, should I say, a newsletter that was put in the library of Makero University. So he read a little of it and they say, if you want more information, well, he applied for it and the foundation sent him. That was 1982. And of course, he read it and put it there and I discovered it in 1997, so yeah. So it works, it works. So visiting these institutions, uh, there's no problem placing books as long as they don't get out. The libraries that don't allow books to get out, it can happen, it's easy. Have a branch of the Russia Foundation there, it's very good. And uh, this was uh, a link to the group activities. I had some arrangement where we have, we can start with, um, the national level, we have the district level, 
visiting institutions, as you can say, and creating clubs within institutions, you know. Um, the different, even at district level, you can create some clubs. We call them clubs, not study groups, because people that don't like studying, you know, we talk study group or <laughs> like another school. So yeah, you say clubs, of course with clubs comes activities, you have, you have, you know, you can play chase after some time, then you read a bit, something that, it's not reading in quotes, not reading. Yeah, that will motivate them. But when you, stay study, when you say study group, maybe like, okay, I left school sometime. So, okay, ways the Russia book can help. Introduce, help in documentation, facilitation, and contribution of the relevant material that can be of help, yeah? Support the study groups in any way, either by sending mentors or something like that. Support some of the projects started by Rancher Book readers if they are set up, yeah, like placing books, libraries, or you yeah, are going to places, you know, they can come and help in that. Talk shows, radio, television, they can help in that as well. Uh, be the head of, of course, that is after it is introduced. I envision that we can have a bigger Urantia Book. <laughs> foundation in that place because it's possible yeah um, in 2012 11 12 there there's happy science have you heard about happy science it's like a new religion or something you you know about it it was started in Asia someone they came to Uganda they put up some structure and it's there well, that's 2000, about 13, 14 there. So it's possible that we can have the Rancher book there as well and the foundation managed, the, uh, managed by, okay, yeah. And wow, that is my what It says, the age of enlightenment is at hand. Yeah, I was inspired by the Rancher book. Thank you so much. It says, the age of enlightenment is at hand, and surely each of us should strive to be enlightened. The concept of the fatherhood of God and brotherhood of man should forever evolve in our hearts and minds, bringing with it love, hope, and a sense of direction to all will creatures on your ranch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And remember, be brief, because I have to remember what you said. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, Claire. Yeah. Uh, could you talk about your study group? Yeah. People don't like to read so much in Uganda. Interesting. <laughs> I, I read. <laughs> okay. Um, you, uh, my study group, actually, I started from workplace. And these are people who are educated already in my workplace. I'm an architect, but uh, Matt, I just mentioned I, I work as a business manager, yes, and I did accounts, yes. So in our workplace, we have educated people who are enthusiasts of research mostly because we do a lot of research, M&E, money, monitoring and evaluation is all about research. So there, of course, there's a time I used to leave it in my wardrobe, the book, intentional, of course. So I could find them trying to pick it up and read. And so with time, they started liking it. And they started asking questions, and I, f I couldn't answer them. So you read the book. I don't know much, but maybe you'll find your truth. So they started reading. So about, about four of them start to read and like it and okay I say okay fine we shall make a timetable of who takes it this week the other week because it was one I had given out to some other person the other copy that I had 
So we started circulating it within the, the workplace. And up to now, they're still reading it, you know. Uh, that's how now the group starts to happen. Because at some point, I became a reference point. Like, uh, there's this, I, I found this, how do you, how do you explain this in the, so I notice, okay, if I, I need, we organize a Saturday, always Saturdays, where we come and share. Yeah, I share. Of course, they ask me a lot of questions, and I'm like, well, open this, open that. I, I don't know the answer, but find more about it. In that. So like that. So we started socializing that way. And with time, of course, they told their friends, and those who had said picking interest, but most times it's curiosity to to compare notes. It's not curiosity to to take up the book or the new knowledge. So, yeah, curiosity to compare notes and the Bible mostly because Christianity is one of the predominant. So they are comparing the Bible with the um, Oriental book. And it's so big that you can't compare just two days, three days. You need to read the whole thing in order to compare. So they get a challenge and some, some of them say, I like it, but Sometime I'll, I'll read it like that. But for the group, so we start growing. Every last month of the Saturday, we read. And that's how we started. So uh, we have about six active members. And we are 10 for those who, when we call for a meeting, they come. And uh, we're supposed to be 12, but the others live outside the city, like up north you notice up north so yeah once they when they come we we don't use internet uh, zoom or whatever because the internet is highly unreliable if you notice sometimes when we have zoom matter <laughs> we have a problem I, I always freeze out <laughs> I get freeze yeah so sometimes yeah that's a challenge and yet I'm in the city Kampala is our city yeah Yeah, the size of Uganda. The size of Uganda. <laughs> Are you familiar with uh, kilometers, square kilometers? Kind of. <laughs> one million, uh, about one million, two hundred thirty-five <coughs> square kilometers. So it's quite small. It's not so big. Uh, it's it's not Manhattan. Is a bit small, a, a little small. Uh, I don't know. Um, How much is it in kilometers, squared? About yeah, yeah. One, one million, two hundred thirty, yeah. one million, yeah. one million, yeah. square, yeah. square, yes. It, it's a lot, but of course, compared to other countries, it's, uh, yeah. So, someone submitted the size of Connecticut? Connecticut? Uh, it's small. <laughs> I think most states in, in, uh, in America are bigger than the most states. Mm -hmm. I, think I think all states are bigger. Yes? What is your mother tongue? Uh, I'm what a is your mother tongue? I'm a Mugishu. My culture, if I may say, uh, I'm a Mugishu. My name has a lot of virtues. It is, um, that name was given to my grandpa, grandfather. And it means leader. It's a name that was got. Let me just. <clears throat> the Buganda Kingdom. When they, they, uh, the British came, they used them to conquer the rest of the. They used the Buganda kingdom to conquer the rest of the, uh, the people around them. So one of the conquests, because my, my home village is around here. So they came to, my, to our land. And when they 
reached there, my great grandfather was a warrior. We are warriors. Yeah, we are warriors. He had, um, we have a totem, I, a black snake and a bird, paradise bird. Yeah, it's my totem, yeah. So he had always, as a chieftain, he had a spear in the, in the middle of the compound, right? With two fo tongues facing up to show that that's a warrior and, yeah. So these people come and they, they see the spear and they're like, okay, who lives here? And of course, you know, conquest is you get the strongest and subdue them and then, so when they convinced him, he, like, okay, fine, it's okay, you can, can come and, so the name is supposed to be Katikiro, which is a Buganda king's name for leader, because my, my grand, great-grandfather was a leader, so they gave him that name. So it's a foreign name. Those are not my real names. In my clan, <laughs> I am called different names. Yeah. So I, I'm called different names. Yes. I, I'm not Jesus. <laughs> it's Michael. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I, our culture in Uganda is the only culture that circumcises boys. The only culture that transforms boys to men through circumcision, which was introduced by the women by a woman, <laughs> in revenge that, I mean, they get pregnant and <laughs> they have pregnant women. <laughs> and so they, they're like, oh, you should also feel some pain. So that's how it was introduced. <laughs> yeah, that's how powerful our women were, yes, in, in our society. And what age they go? At, uh, circumcision is at 18. Oh, at, yes, when you're transforming into a man, oh, yes. Okay. And you can, whether you marry, you have children, and you've never circumcised, you're still a boy, even if you're 50. Yeah. So I'm um, interested in the development and evolution of women in your culture in terms of it sounds like obviously they were held in the home. It was a very patriarchal society. Yes. And yet they were the keeper of the secrets. They passed on the, the oral culture wondering what you see as the possibility for more equalization with women if you find women interested in the Arantia book or, or coming to the Arantia book or how do you see where they are where women today are in your world so several questions on evolution of women in <laughs> women's roles um, might affect the Arantia book um, in the acceptance by women, and is it changing um, right now the concept of women? Okay, yeah. Oh, yes. Um, Adele said something about the, the women as well at some point. But I would say for our, for Ugandan women, especially my culture, there has been an evolution. Yes, because the society has opened up. There has been a, a uh, and uh, there has been a spontaneous open up of society, such that, well, everything is now out there. It's not closed anymore, right? Some places they still have, still, especially deep in the villages, but now it's open up to the extent that. We may now go to school, yes. That means they spend like about, about 15 years of their life in school, if I may say. So that open up is there. We have culture as well. Much as this circumcision, as I told you, it's now not like we dance. Those days we could dance for a, a whole month, for example. Yeah, it is always even years as when we circumcise. So, this is 2019. We don't circumcise. 
we circumcise 2020, even years. So, and that's in December, circumcised in December. It was done so to accommodate students because in December you can heal up to February. That's when schools start. So one month of healing. So uh, culture is evolving to adopt with what's happening, yes? And the women are a part of that as well. Yes, there's been some change. Uh, currently, we are writing our biographies. Not, we are not giving the women to keep our, <laughs> our biography or the, the clan secrets. Now it's being written. Yeah. And I think maybe that shift has led to the development of the witch doctors, because now they are now the ones who keep the knowledge of, yes of the society now a bit because now they, they still stick to the tradition where we live it we are living yes yeah yeah so my assumption your study group is mostly men are women how would they be interested in the book or an approach to women uh, okay uh, we have women pastors as well in uganda just to say pentecostal pastors yes we have like one or two women pastors most of the apart from the catholic church that has priests most most of the churches have women pastors yes including anglican so it's it's possible that the women will take on as well though it's a role under development it's not really open out there Yes, the struggle is not that all it's all free for everyone. It's a struggle with the the ladies struggle to get there, of course, yeah. But it's it's open. However, the challenge is, you know, uh, given the where we've come from, where the ladies, as we said, they keep behind us the bo the men, yeah. I say the kitchen or whatever, so that we are at the forefront. So they're still coming. After attending education, I think that's when, yeah. But they, they do. They write a book. And they, they, are, they are good ambassadors in Uganda. Because the policy of the government is women are also fronted. Actually, we, that's why they introduced the women MP, member of parliament, for every district, just to uplift the, yeah. So it's there and highly there, too much of it. Only that the women have to step up now to, they have attained education, PhDs and all that. It's just now set to go. So it's possible, yes. The Russia book will come through them as well. Yes? Are women, yeah, we'll do one. Are women the spiritual ambassadors in your culture? You, you know, there's a picture of, of um, where is it, uh, Nakaima, this. I, I wanted to show you some pictures. This one, Nakaima tree. Nakaima is a... Yeah, I I, okay, I thought we were going to use a beam, <laughs> that's why, but okay. So Nakaima tree, Nakaima is a, a lady's name. She was a goddess in Uganda. So she, she from, this is Bunyoro region. Bunyoro culture, Banyoro culture had demigods. Yes, there were demigods. And some of them were ladies. Actually, they say they, they were the treasures. They, they are called the treasures, demigods. They never died. That's what they say. They never died. However, we have like women who give birth to rivers. Yes, 
in our culture. <laughs> so that is how much they are. And according to the Urantia book, exactly what they say in the Urantia book, the fear of women is too much now. That, that's why be, maybe they didn't bring them forward. Because the mystery around the woman is, yes. So uh, Nakai Mother Tree, they worship it from there because the lady, the, god the goddess, uh, disappeared within the tree. That's what I say. So they wash her there, you know, something like that. They go there seeking for witches, all that. So yes, uh, it is there. They are custodians, yes. To us, the ladies were custodians of history. We never wrote. That's why we don't have any documentation. Yes, but the ladies kept. And of course, with that, we had to monitor them. Of course, there is a bad side to it. Monitor them and keep them not to say anything, you know, in case they, you know, yeah. The, sec the second question was so, what is the dominant language in your uh, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah. Yes, what is the dominant language? Yes, the dominant language currently, we were colonized, colonized by the British. So, English is dominant, and I think is <coughs> we don't have a national language, but English, I may say. However, the business language, we are in the East African community, so Swahili is one of the, Kiswahili or Swahili is one of the languages we use throughout the East Africa. So we also use it in our business. And uh, Buganda, being one of the greatest empires then, also has some Luganda, there's Luganda as well, as one of the tribes for business. Not official, but business. If you anywhere you can speak Luganda, and it's okay. Anywhere you can speak uh, English, and it's okay. okay. Yeah. The most educated people, and <coughs> they are here. They are Cholis, yes. Here, not so much. It's of recent that they have started adopting education, and yeah. So these are most educated, and it comes all the way this side. Yeah. Oh, yes. Did you uh, uh, say anything about the population of uh, Uganda? Uganda? The, what is the population of Uganda? As, uh, 2014, 41.5 million Ugandan, uh, Ugandan people. However, before it was at, in 19, 19, 1966, it was about 12 million. Yeah. So it, it has gone up and still going up. Uh, the rate of, is it birth is 3%, something. Is it growth? Like the rate of growth, growth rate, yeah, 3%. As of 2014, current census, we went through, yeah. Um, how does the climate and environment in Uganda affect um, how you might bring the Urantia book to 
uh, the different areas within Uganda. Is that a question? Okay. Um, now, as you said, different tribes, different climates. So this is most arid. Yes. Most arid and flat. Uh, it's lower savanna. As we come this side, we have wet, like rains and forests, and towards Rwanda. Rwanda is about here, it's, it's down here. So, yes, these are Bantu. Bantu are agriculturists, yes. These are the Nilotics and, 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 and yeah, the Sudanics who are, are hunters and, and, and cattle keepers most of the time because the place is arid. Now, um, in relation to the Russia book, it's interesting that religion in Uganda is not um, affected by whether you're in any region. We have the north region, south, west, east. It doesn't mind. Territory or whatever is not. However, the introduction of, say, Islam, most people around here are Islam, you know, just because it was the first place. And, but here we have Islam, many of them, actually because of the influence from South Sudan, yes. And we have a lot of Catholics around here, yes. Uh, Catholics, and it's spread throughout all religions. Protestants, wherever you go. So it's, it's not an effect. Uh, territory has no effect with, with, with regard to uh, religion and its, um, its transfer within the region. Yes? Of course, these, these are more Christian. Uh, they have a belief that uh, the Ankoli, these are the Ankoli people, are cattle keepers as well. So they think, you know, Jesus was born in the Koran, <laughs> for those who read the Bible. So <laughs> they think they are the, the people who Jesus so far, Jesus so fast, or they were blessed to, you know. So they, they have that belief in them. Uh, so they have the Christianity as one of their favorite, favored religions. But of course it's mixed. We have Muslims, we have, um, it's only, Baha'i, Baha'i, it's, it's only located here, and a few, like a few of them here, a few Baha'i. Uh, we have another religion which is just in one district. It's, um, I forget its name, but they put on white all through. I forget its name, but it's located here. So it's okay anywhere you go. It's fine. It's not a problem. Not a problem. Territory doesn't ma matter a lot. Yes. Uh, Judy? And so the universities, <coughs> the higher education, the universities, are they everywhere in Uganda or are they concentrated in certain locations? Where are the universities in Uganda? Uh, At first, 19. Between 1940, yeah, 40, yeah, to 1980s, we had one university located in Kampala. That's Makerere University. It's a national university. Currently, we have universities all over. Apart from this area, we have universities here, here, everywhere, throughout, apart from this side. Because the population density here is like for every square kilometers, for those who you get a family, one family, you know, mm -hmm. sparsely populated, so it's, it's, it's not economical. So we have this side is a bit populated because of the good environment. So there are a lot of universities and then branches of universities. Yeah, like Makere has within all, all the area. And, and also secondary schools, so many of them. That's why uh, the approach to spreading the Russia book was, if we use institutions as well, we can still like 
go throughout the country. Um, universities, the only thing is there are some universities with undeveloped libraries, if I may say, uh, because they are still young, mm -hmm. yeah, still young. So for, for libraries, I'm not sure whether they are, they may have just a room like this for a library, you know. But at least they have a library, only not so developed. Yeah, but across the country, apart from this side, this side, because here we have one uh, here at Soroti. But this side, uh, uh, there's a park here called uh, Kidepo National Park. So again, it affects the, <laughs> the area. Yeah. Yes. Um, I had a couple questions. One is a yes, no. Do you have the same problem with electricity that, that Adi mentioned in Nigeria? Is that no. a problem? No, you don't. The same problem with electricity in Uganda? Internet, however, is a problem because the, this side has v volcanic activities, uh -huh. so the hills are so, uh, you know, the signals. The same here, there's a Mount Elgon here, still hills, so the signal is a problem. However, this side is a bit flat, so signals are a bit, yeah. Uh, because of the Nile, so we have a lot of... Uh, uh, Electricity. <laughs> this a lot, yeah. In, and in your presentation, you mentioned several ways in which the foundation could support you. And you know, said in books or conferences or so. Can you prioritize what you think would be the number one way that the foundation could support you at this point? What what your primary needs are there? Um, could you tell us the primary need you have for support from your Rancher Foundation? begin with um, uh, the material that's one and maybe uh, either conference or workshop or talk shows on radio for the start material to help um, when you institutions because wh why am I talking of institutions because the locals are not well uh, the English language English is a problem so it's good that we <coughs> go to institutions where there is some kind of and specific uh, universities where there's some kind of education learning and thirst for knowledge something like that and you can easily yeah I have a question about the um, you, you said that people forget a lot because so much is oral so they need to be reminded could you translate that into how that would um, be affected like with radio or some of the other mm -hmm. mechanisms um, what kind of pace um, would be necessary for this constant reminding that you talked about so they didn't forget <laughs> <laughs> why I said they for you say forget a lot you say forget. <laughs> okay um, we have done I I was part of the research program that did a lot of research around the country on M and E in terms of mosquito. We have a lot of mosquitoes, right? So mosquito nets uh, giving out, and we had to advertise a lot. You know, remind people. You you throw adverts and you have to come back again. And you come and ask, did you hear the advert? Oh, w what was so you know? So you have to. So somehow I sense okay. Constant reminder. However, for the Urantia book, it's um, it's different a bit, yes, because first it's about uh, you affecting the spirit, the mind of someone. So somehow at the first, I was talking to some members here, fellow readers, and they're like, the first time I had this, I was hooked, you know. Well that could be the spark. M most times it's a spark for the Uran. We have not yet gone into uh, testing how the Uran could be, <laughs> you know. I was just giving the experience of other things that we have done and the feedback we get. But for the Uran book experience, 
it may be different a bit because this is the soul, this is the mind, this is affecting the very spirit of someone. So maybe, and it's philosophy, maybe it's different. Yeah, that's what I think, yeah. Okay, well, we've reached the end of our session, and thank you very much for a beautiful yeah. job. Thank you. I will, I will try to get the photos for every part. Actually, I have them here only that I'm wondering why the display. And you see the different cultures, the, the dress code, the, all that. Very, we like bright colors. That is our greatest, yeah. Uh, like these people here, we have ostriches. Eh? You know, I, 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 always, I, I saw, I went to the park and I saw a red Indian, is it red Indian? With the feathers. Now, this side, the ostriches, they also use the same feathers and very bright colors, they like color. This is like dancing, the Baganda, they like dancing and they can dance to any, anything as long as there's music or something. They like using the drum. The drum is our like symbol. Uh, it is one of the communication device. You know, before anything, you, you drum and you call people using a drum or a horn from the cattle. Blow it and people know.